And so, you know, as we look at going into 2020, I would challenge you to start looking for opportunities to give, to start looking for opportunities to do something bigger than you did in 2019, to do something better than you did in 2019. And to be able to create a culture within your organization that is unparalleled because it's bigger than numbers. It's bigger than sales metrics. It's bigger than, you know, processes and day-to-day operations. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ah, That's right. This is the Sales Wolves podcast, and this is episode 144. And I want to talk to you guys about a topic today that I believe is very important. My company believes it is so important that it is one of our core values as a, as a business. And it's a topic that I believe that if you embrace it in the culture of your company or in your organization could be the unlock to the next level of success, but more importantly, the next level of good that your business is doing. And that is the topic of conscious capitalism, conscious capitalism, which really, when you boil it down, is this idea of social good, doing something good, doing something honorable, doing something that's bigger than yourself, that's bigger than each individual within your team, within your company, within your organization, but doing something that everybody can get tied into, that everybody can buy into, and that everybody can know that whatever their role is within the company, that it's going towards that good that the company as a whole is doing. And so what I wanna do is just t- give a little background um, you know, with our company and some of the things that we do, and then maybe pose some ideas uh, for you and your business and your organization and how you can implement this idea of conscious capitalism and this idea of social good within uh, your respective businesses. So, you know, radical generosity is one of the pillars of our company. And really that was started by the founders of our company. It's something that they have always believed in. And you know, when they set out to build this business and we have an insurance business for those of you that don't know, uh, life insurance specifically, it really was based on this idea of setting huge audacious goals within our business, where we want to be in five years, 10 years, where we want to be in 20 years. And the understanding of, and really just the, the knowing that it would take God's hand in this business to get it to where we were ultimately striving to go. Like setting goals that were so big that there's no possible way that us as individuals could accomplish it, that it could only be accomplished with God working through us and with us to get us to that level of success. But we all know this idea of sowing and reaping. And we talk about it often from a business perspective, and especially this is a sales podcast of the idea of you're out there sowing those seeds, you're out cold calling, you're out prospecting and you're sowing seeds that you will one day be able to receive a harvest from. And that's the reaping of that activity and that work that's put in over the course of months and years. But this idea of social good, this idea of conscious capitalism is just that. It is sowing seeds. And it may be sowing seeds in another country. It may be sowing seeds in your community. It may be sowing seeds with different ministries and organizations and nonprofits that you're helping and giving to. 
But those same seeds that you're sowing by giving are going to reap rewards and there will be a harvest. And I think when you are tying both of those two ideas together, both of those definitions of sowing and reaping together, where there is hard work being put in on a regular basis, but simultaneously there is proactive and there is purpose filled giving while sowing those seeds of hard work, then the harvest is going to be that much greater. And I'm not here to impose any beliefs on you. You can say that the universe will never be indebted to you. That's one way I've heard it uh, referred to as you can call it karma. The way I look at it is the fact that you can never, ever, ever outgive God, that you will always receive more in the end. And I want to set this up with uh, an important understanding that conscious capitalism, social good, giving is not done with the intention of receiving. It's not done as a means to an end. It's not done as a box to check so that you can have a higher level of success. But these seeds are being sown with the understanding that that's just how it works. So I don't give with the expectation to receive. We don't, we don't tackle this idea of social good with the expectation of what we're going to receive in return. But there is an understanding that you will receive. And so with our organization, with our company, um, we give to a number of different ministries. We give to a number of different organizations. We have a number of different, um, give you a real life example, um, of food banks that we fund. I think we did like 750,000 meals last year through those food banks. And they're in places where there's a great need, uh, places in North Carolina where you have senior citizens that are in a situation that is dire enough to where they're making decisions on whether I pay for my medications, whether I pay my for my prescriptions or whether I pay for food this month. And we give to Nicaragua and we give to organizations in India and we, we give and we give and we give. But the amazing thing about that is you know, we've got 80 plus life insurance agents across the country. We've got, you know, 17 to 20 employees here at our home office. And all of them know, like someone in Kansas knows today that that life insurance policy that they just sold to that person sitting across the table from them, well, that is great for that person. And while that is great in the commission that that agent is going to receive for putting that work in, that a portion of that is going to something that is bigger than them. It is going to something that is bigger than all of us put together. And where I think this comes, it becomes extremely important is in working with millennials. It's humorous at times to hear generations talk about the generation that's coming behind them in a negative way. And never has that been more apparent than right now with the way uh, people in their fifties and sixties and seventies talk about millennials, but millennials share one common theme. They are very service and cause driven. They want to get behind something that's bigger than them. They want to work towards something that has a cause. And I believe that they will be the next great generation in America. And as a interesting side note, isn't it funny that every generation has talked about the generation that's coming behind them? Like there's, this is no different than the baby boomers and the greatest generation that there ever was. Like it's, it's always been that way. But as it pertains to millennials, if we know this about them, if we know that they're cause driven, that they're purpose driven, if we know these things, 
then why would we not create an atmosphere? Why would we not create an environment for them to be able to harness that desire, for them to be able to utilize that desire in a productive way towards the business? If that person knows that, hey, I'm going to go put in an incredible amount of work this month, I'm going to work harder than I've ever worked, I'm going to make a great living by doing so, I'm going to provide a great service by doing so, but also my company is using that money, is using a portion of the revenue that's being earned and being received to do these great things. One of the most recent and best examples uh, with our organization is we just started our own nonprofit. It's called the first responder benefit association or FRBA. And we have a huge, huge passion for first responders, huge passion for first responders. I truly believe that it is one of the biggest disconnects in the U S the underappreciation and the lack of compensation for our nation's first responders. The people that are out there risking their lives every single day to protect, to protect the very communities that we live in, to protect our ability to walk the streets and to go about our business. Like these are the people that are, that are creating the safe environments that we live in, that are protecting our homes, in case of a fire, that are protecting our lives in the case of an emergency, a medical emergency, that are protecting you know, our very well-being, keeping the criminals off the streets. Why they would be underappreciated and why they would be underpaid is beyond me. I can't tackle that problem, but I can do something to provide something for those first responders, especially in their greatest time of need. What is a first responder family's greatest time of need is when a first responder dies. And so what the first responder benefit association is doing is we are stepping in when there's a line of duty death and we're sitting down with that family and we're looking at their bills and we're paying $7,500 worth of bills that may last a couple of months. It may just depending on their need and what the biggest need is for them at that time, we're able to step in during this time of tragedy because what we can't do is we can't help the emotional grief. We can't help the loss but we can help with the financial burden that comes along with a loss of life and being a life insurance agency, you know, we see this all the time and it is at the very forefront of our minds of what happens when someone dies. And so the first responder benefit association has been created. It has been launched. Uh, you can check it out. If you just search FRBA or first responder benefit association on all the social media platforms, and it was a long process to get that up and running, to, to get that 501c3 designation. It's a long process to get there. But I'm so proud of our organization for not only getting it accomplished, but for having the desire to do social good. And what I can tell you is the launching of that nonprofit it fires up every single employee here at the home office. It fires up every single agent that's in the field because they know again, that what they are doing on a daily basis is going towards something that's bigger than themselves. And so that's a practical example and, and one that we have just recently launched. But my question to you is what could your organization be doing? Or maybe first, what is your organization doing? When you look at your revenue at the end of the year, what percentage of that revenue is being given away? What percentage of that revenue is, is going towards the incredible organizations that are out there, the incredible efforts that are needed within our country and around the world? And how can you improve upon that? How can you increase that? It's very interesting, you know, most people towards the end of the year and it's the fourth quarter, they start evaluating, you know, how do we do this year? But when's the last time you sat around with your leadership team and said, how do we do this year in our giving? How do we do this year in our social good that our organization did? And I'd be willing to say that through those conversations that you will find opportunities 
and you will find opportunities not only to give, but opportunities to stretch yourself. And it may play a major role in your planning for 2020 in the goals that you have. If you have a desire and if you have this urge to start giving more, well, guess what's going to be required to give more? More revenue, more money, more sales, more production, better processes, more efficiency. And when you start looking at your business through the lens of the social good that can be provided by your business, it, it adds a whole nother level of responsibility and it ha- and adds a, a whole nother level of accountability. And so as this year is coming to an end, I would strongly encourage you to get together with your leadership team. Whether you're just a salesperson, one of a thousand in your company, start having these conversations. Start asking questions to your leadership. Like, hey, what are we doing um, on, on, with giving? What, what organizations are we supporting? And if they're not, then take some initiative. Find some organizations, find some causes that you feel are worthy, that you are passionate about, and see if your leadership may share in some of those desires to help. I don't think that that conversation will ever end badly. I don't think you'll ever be ridiculed or just completely shut down when you're coming to the leadership of your business with an idea to do good for your community, to do good for some cause that you feel is worthy and wanting to see if the organization can come together and find ways to increase revenues to then have those increased revenues go towards that good, which you want to do. I just don't think that when you come at that with that posture of giving and with that posture of generosity, that that's ever going to be met in a negative way. Now they may not share the same passion for the exact cause, but I think that you'll plant a seed uh, within your leadership and they'll start to realize how important it is. And so, you know, as we look at going into 2020, I would challenge you to start looking for opportunities to give, to start looking for opportunities to do something bigger than you did in 2019, to do something better than you did in 2019, and to be able to create a culture within your organization that is unparalleled because it's bigger than numbers. It's bigger than sales metrics. It's bigger than, you know, processes and day-to-day operations. It's doing something that's good. And I think that you will find that the camaraderie and the growth that will happen internally will manifest itself externally in the results and the production and the, and the uh, year end revenues at the end of 2020. So this idea of conscious capitalism, this idea of social good, it's, it's just about sowing and reaping. It's the sowing and reaping that we've always talked about of the hard work that goes in and the harvest that you will receive because of it. But when you tie in this idea of sowing those seeds through your gifts, through sowing those seeds through the organizations and the causes that you can help in a major way, I can promise you that the harvest will be bigger. And so if you will just trust me in that, and if you will just believe me in what I'm saying is true, then what are you going to do about it? I would love to get some feedback from you. I would love to get a message from you guys and tell me what your company is doing. And then what I would love even more is to tell me what your company is going to do in 2020 to give more, to give better and what causes that you guys have created and found that you are passionate about, that you can get behind so that every single person in your organization from the person sweeping the floors to the CEO knows that what they're doing on a daily basis matters more than to just the bottom line of the business, but it matters to your local community and around the world. So that's a challenge. 
And I cannot wait to hear from you and see what happens in 2020 when you really get on board with this idea that it is not about us. It's about what we can do for others. So with that, this is episode 144 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!